Hello to anyone watching this in the far-off future. This is session 47 of Primordial Harmony, a <coughs> run-through modification of the Princes of the Apocalypse Adventure Module for D&D 5th Edition. My name's Mike, I'm running this, and tonight I'm joined by... I'm Nyx, and I play Alaria. She's a wild elf, wood elf ranger with her pet panther, Valora. And I'm also playing a tabaxi monk named Bit. Hi, I'm Senna, and I'm playing Delia, the gnome wizard, and also Snow, the Tempest player. And I'm Kitties, and I will be playing Hum Arkangren, the uh, <sighs> gnome bard, and I'm also playing Mom Maeve on Dolmen, who is a uh, Eladrin elf. Uh, Hello, my name is Miles. I will be playing two characters. I'm playing Tadias Adolf, an Awesomer Seeker. I'm also playing Chatticus Winthrop, a um, human druid. That is it. Play the dad of the group, Zachariel Vitalis, the Fire Genasi Shovel Knight, uh, veteran of the uh, Way Shields. And I also play the fabulous. Ignacio Ricardo Flametta, the greatest fire sorcerer ever. All right. And with these 10 characters, we return to this grand, ambitious, and possibly contrived narrative. Our stars, the excavators, Illyria and Valora, Delia, Hum, and Tadias, gathering themselves at Twiddles and Fiddles after a night of adventure, dispelling the Genasi specific miasma. Tadias arriving shortly after a breakfast date with Katie Colbert. However, Zachariel was missing. The rest of the party decided to head to the Wayshield headquarters. Meanwhile, our B-sides, Gordon's task force, who just arrived in town the night prior, gathered themselves up to head to the Wayshield headquarters themselves. Meanwhile, after the heartfelt conversation between Zachariel and Sihara, wait, no. Zachariel and Floriana, why did I write Sihara? Zachariel and Sunya Spade both felt a pull of some sort, something that tugged them back to the location where the excavators got their name. Zachariel followed up with this, and when he struck the earth with Sunya's, uh, uh, with Sunya's instruction, both of them were granted a bit more access into the cacophonous maelstrom of memory locked in Zachariel's soul. When he came to, he was greeted by a small earth elemental. What remained of the elemental that the Earth Cult had stored Sunni Spade in? But he was friendly, and so Zachariel took the newly dubbed Pebble home with him and dropped him off before there before making his way to the Wayshill headquarters himself. All player characters together, introductions and information was shared, including a clue pointing to the Air Cult's base in the Sky Pierce Peaks that Ashwick is still kicking. Kaleholt, the Ice Mage, has left the Air Cult. An unassigned cult could be operating inside Forstride. Meanwhile, Zachariel, eager to gain his new rank, presented Gordon with a list of his deeds. Highly impressed, Gordon presents him with his badge right in his office and drapes the cloak, the uh, uh, ceremonial cloak, over his shoulders in front of his friends and allies. So pleased by this, Zachariel invited all present to a dinner party at his house that evening. Did I miss anything? I think that's most of it. Excellent. Uh, we pick up in the Wayshield headquarters, just as everyone is about to head out. As... Uh, I... Get the right music up. So as you guys are, somebody, whoever's stepping toward the door, whoever's closest to the front door, uh, you hear a knock. Decide who's closest Who to the door. Who is it? 
Uh. Servi. Is Gordon there? Servi who? Uh. One sec. He has a last name. It's in my notes. Uh. Servi Ron? The. Weapon delivery. It's a very poor joke. As I move over and open the door for him. And uh, you're presented with at the or <coughs> at the door is a uh, halfling about an inch taller than Hum, carrying a slip of paper. Oh, or oh, sorry. He kind of like glances over the crowd, recognizes some faces, doesn't recognize others. Gordon uh, looks over at the door and uh, oh, survey. Um, you have that. Ch oh, what was that roll? Oh. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, Gordon says, uh, oh, uh, he looks at everyone here, and, uh, actually, Hum, you, uh, you, you recognize this halfling just because you've seen him around Twiddles and Fiddles. Um, Gordon says, uh, oh, um, well, could some of you help carry in the weapons to the armory? That would save me about ten minutes. I'll help. Chadwick is quietly, like, steps backwards to the back of the room as to not draw attention. <laughs> Snow offers to help as well. I can help. Valeria helps. Maeve doesn't mind at all. So, uh, he's got a cart outside, uh, that's being pulled by a small pony. And, uh, on it is a couple sets of chainmail, uh, about five swords, and five shields. And it's one ripped pony. It's, well, he's pulling it, he's not, <laughs> he's not carrying it. Um, so, you guys, uh, start pulling stuff up, and, um, he, uh, he, he just kind of looks around, <laughs> he says, they all look very Distinguished. What's this meeting about? If, I, if you might, if if you don't mind me asking. Oh, our our friend here just got veteran. Did you see his cape? It's amazing. He looks at it and uh, that's the one of the highest ranks in the way shields, right? Halfling. Oh, I suppose the. Only rank we left for me to go is uh, to usurp Gordon. You sure you want this job? He says. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might get it yet. Who knows? He pats your back and uh, hefts up a bundle of swords. And um... oh, hang on a second. We've met before. Uh, yeah, you came into my shop. I remember. Yes. Any uh, any luck with that project that I proposed to you? You proposed a spike shield to him, right? Uh, a spike shield, and I also showed him the brutal... Uh... Ah. Barbed javelins. Yeah. Oh, you're the one who suggested the barbed javelins and the spike shields. Yeah, we've got a couple prototypes, actually. It's kind of hard Ooh. to get the metal secure without it snapping, but I mean, it, it it works for what it is for a while, but I'd prefer something that's more long-lasting, so we're still working on it. Have you tried, um, I'm not much of a smith myself, but uh, perhaps um, forging the tips into the shield? Well, yes, we have. Maybe on the edges or something, like uh, you see how my shield kind of rounds out around the top? He nods and he says, well, that's one of the first things we tried. The only problem is some of the metal we get is not up to snuff to to hold that shape with mm -hmm. the stresses of war. Intricate craftsmanship like that is fragile. Have you thought about maybe a cast? Well, yes, of course. It's one of the first things we did. The problem is, if it's subjected to too much stress, it snaps. 
Well, it makes sense. Uh, but I'm sure you'll get it. Eventually. Doesn't help that uh, Mikael is spending most of his time in our forge. Ah. He kind of mutters something under his breath. And he's like, as you guys are walking down the stairs into the basement. And uh, Gordon says, oh, right over there. As you guys are putting things away. And he... I tr Tadias tries to juggle a few swords before he puts them away. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay, sure, make a... <laughs> make an acrobatic... Uh, yeah, make an acrobatics check. You can certainly lift them. Can you control yeah. them? I don't know. I technically have, you know, proficiency in some of those things. Ah, I'm not good at this. Bad <laughs> acrobatics? Oh god. I'm not sure what else to do for juggling. <laughs> yeah, so you throw them up and then they clatter onto the ground. Uh, careful, what are you doing? As you can see, the danger is regardless of where you hit them with. I don't think spikes in the little shield will change anything. They buzz away. Hum looks at Survey and she says, You ever think about spikes you could remove? Almost like screwing them in? He, uh, blinks, rubs his chin. Red. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. That way, if they broke, you could just replace them. That's, says, and it might actually be more secure as well. Thank you for your suggestion, Hum. Anytime. He knows your name because you play at Rules and Fiddles all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh my! Never knew you were a blacksmith. I'm just clever. Yes, and frightening. He's very good with pointy things. So, uh, if we're done with all this equipment, what are we going to have some celebration in Zachariel's place? Do we need to get something? One second. I think we need some booze, Tadias. <laughs> kind of what I was leading on. Well, if you all want to go gather uh, alcohol, um, I need to pick up the food and then cook it. What are we Which having? Was, I was thinking about uh, a nice big pig. Maybe a boar. And what drink would you like with this? Pig. Oh, did you have any other suggestions? Would you like something else? I just figured a boar would feed everyone. It's perfectly fine. We all know how partial you are to boar. Hmm. There's just a little knowing smirk on the side of his face as he kind of stares through his eyebrows. And uh, again, uh, oh, sorry, go on. Go on. <laughs> Go ahead. No, you're good. Well, uh, just scene dressing. Uh, when you guys walk back up to the top, um, whoever's helping, um, you see uh, Gordon just signing a little form uh, that Servi gave him. And he nods. He nods. They shake hands. Hey, Servi, before you go anywhere, you would think you could have a word with me alone? Uh, sure. And Gordon kind of like cocks his eyebrow and says, well, you can use my office if you want. Just don't touch anything. Oh, I was just going to walk him out to his pony. He shrugs, <laughs> sure thing. Thanks a lot, Servi. And Servi nods at him and then looks at Hum and kind of just starts stepping outside. For that scene, is any, what else is everyone, everyone doing? Just a real quick, like, what are your intentions now? Are you guys going to start heading out to shop? Um, I, uh, Tadice is going to wait around for Hum so they can go get the boost together. Okay. I don't think Chaticus has anything specifically, so he's probably just talking with the other crew about 
these nice people that just invited them to this party and whether or not they should bring something. Okay. And say Gordon. Uh, Zachary was talking, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Would you mind if I uh, take a couple of practice swords? The wooden ones? Yes. No problem. What are you going to use them for? Well, when I was uh, my daughter's age, I was already wielding a sword, so I figure maybe it's time to give uh, her some of my wisdom. Be my guest, veteran. Thank you, Commander. I don't know if that's actually the name of the rank, but we'll we'll stick with that for now. I'll wreck on it later. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just imagine that I call him a numeral, a, a plethora of things. I oh, got you. Okay. Uh, what is um, Bit and or Illyria doing? Uh, I think Bit's hanging around with her, um, their, that side. Okay, with Tanias, or not Tanias, with, uh... Yeah, with, uh, like, Chatticus. Chatticus. Yeah. Radical. Okay. And Maeve, you yeah. know, them. Yeah, do we have a Maeve for them yet? Gordon's Task Force, GTF, or B-Sides. That's the catch-all. Maeve wants to hang out with Illyria a little bit. You know, seeing another elf around. It's night. Alright. Uh, and then what is Snow Delia doing? Delia is gonna hang around with Tadias and wait for home. And uh, Snow will quietly excuse herself okay. and head out the door. All right, we'll get back to that. So Hum walks out with Servi, who walks back to his cart, his now empty cart, and uh, he points to um, <laughs> he points just a few uh, ha uh, buildings down opposite the street, and he says, "Shop's right over there. Uh, you can walk with me." Yes, let's walk and talk. Hum uh, kind of threads her arm in his. Uh, all right. Are you... Nah. What, what would you like... What, what can I do you for? So... You know, I've heard you talk about elemental arms before. And... He, uh, it's... he kind of gets a... Gr uh, not a grim. He kind of... His shoulders sink a little bit. He gives a small sigh. Go on. What do you know about it close... He says, well, from how I understand it, the old owner sort of got lost in his cups and pushed employees a little bit too hard and they all quit in protest and most of them started working for the other guilds. Hmm. So he was drinking. He shrugs, he says, and that's what the rumor was. What do you think? He says, I gave him a name, but now I don't know where it is. Uh, e <laughs> Let me see if I can't find it. Ah, okay. He says, I found it. He says, um, well, Bazin was a dick. Through and through. He took, he made me and Mikhail sign contracts so that only he could sell our work. We didn't really pick up on that until later. That's why we left. You don't think anything else was going on there? 
He says, well, we left about three months ago. So whatever happened between then and when they boarded up, I'm not sure. I spoke with a few of the old employees and all they had were gripes. Do you know anybody that was there to the end? He says, hmm. Uh, let me see. Scrolling through notes. He says, um, wait, that's not where I wanted to go. He says, uh, yeah, uh, this one guy named, uh, Schmidt. That's his last name. I don't remember his first name. Do you know where he hangs out? I don't know. Sorry, I can't help you more. What's your interest, anyway? And at this point, you actually walk. He actually like has stopped, and he's just standing in front of a building, which you kind of assume is his shop. Just a hunch, a thought, a worry. Probably nothing. No worries. Thank you for your time. He nods. Uh, thanks for the walk. He kind of like blinks a little bit. Well, uh, always a pleasure. Need to get back to work. Nice chatting with you. I'm see you at Twiddles and Fiddles whenever you're there next. And he unhooks his arm. And... Hum just walks away and waves. Waves back and starts taking his pony around back to the shop. Okay. And you return to uh, to Dias and Delia. Who sees Hum approach them. Talk about alcohol. more shields. I'll fill you in on the way. We need alcohol. Agreed. Delia, I don't think we've ever had the opportunity to really get drunk together, have we? I don't think so. We're going to have to change this. It should be fun. <laughs> I mean, you are in finals, right? What? Aren't you in finals doing... Papers and various things in your courses. Yeah, but they they can they can wait for a night. Besides, gnome work gnomes work better once we've partied. That's true. Absolutely. I trust them on their gnomish knowledge. All right. Uh, so we'll transition to Maeve and Illyria, and anyone else who's with them. Where's the scene going? Two elves and the panther. I'd watch that show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Maeve is just enjoying a conversation with Alaria, just talking about stuff and things. Nothing really. Important. Okay, just a little small talk. Absolutely, just asking about each other. I, I imagine. Cool. You guys go anywhere, or do you just kind of standing in the way shields lobby, or foyer, or whatever? I feel like we're we've walked away. Okay. And we're meandering through uh, four stride. Gotcha. And. Uh, Maybe that Illyria's letting Maeve know about the city in which she... Okay, so that's happening. Um, so what is uh, what's Zachariel doing right now? Uh, he's going to walk outside and look into the sky. What time of day is it? It's like noon. Huh, midday. Ignacio, um, you have the hottest flames, yes? Even though I'm literally a man of fire. 
Yes, but your flames pale in comparison to mine, man of fire. All right, well, you're going to come with me. So I'm going to roleplay with myself. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy I'm going to enjoy this immensely. So I'm going to go to the butcher. All right, go to the butcher. You, you, Can the butcher be him as well? Like, you, use him playing the NPC? Uh, yes! <laughs> cool. Um, so... No, I'll play the butcher. Um, <laughs> Welcome to the meat shop. It, okay, so the butcher, you walk in uh, to the place you normally go, owned by a regular old human. Um, a... just... you're kind of a, you know, typical... Uh, thing you'd imagine, a uh, heavyset man, uh, slightly balding on top. He uh, has some customers that he's dealing with, and you see a little thing with numbers. You know, take a number kind of thing. I take a number and stand patiently. And there's like uh, this dude who's... Uh, there's, this, there's this lady who's just being very particular about the, the width of a slice of ham. And the... Looks like the butcher is just being exceptionally patient with her. Yes, of course. Yep. Mm hmm. Okay, and then the, the, what you said a quarter of an inch less? Okay, sure. And he's got a knife and he's slicing. And some time passes and she gets what she wants, and then uh, he says, uh, he dings a bell and he says, uh, serving 13? And that's you. I look down at my card. Ah! Oh. Good day! He says, Ah, uh, barbecue head. Zachariel, what can I get you? Um, barring the uh, insults, I'm, I'm sure you'll make a great deal today. Um, I need, um, I need to serve a lot of people. Oh, when do you need to serve them? Today. Oh. Hmm. Well, what are you thinking of serving them? I need to feed about 15 people, I believe. 16. Maybe more. Oh, well, let's go with 20. Do you have any, um... Do you have any boars? He says... Matter of fact, I do. You need to feed this crowd today? Yes, that's why I've recruited this man who apparently has the hottest flames in the world. Kind of looks over Ignacio and he says, he just kind of shrugs. Uh, sure. Uh, actually, you're in luck. He says, I've got a seasoned, uh, rubbed down a hog that somebody didn't pick up this morning. Mm. How big is it? Should be just enough. He says, one moment. He goes into a back room. And uh, you see a little bit of chill come out. And then he comes back out with uh, this massive uh, dressed and like already like skinned and everything prepared to ready to cook a hog. And it's covered with rub. This is perfect. Is that um, is that spice daddy rub? He, he, he leans in, smiles. He says, the very same. All right, I'll take it. How much? 20 gold. Even with the insult? He says, I didn't realize it was an insult. My apologies. He puts his hand on his heart. He says, 19 gold. Now, uh, you call me barbecue head. Do I come into your shop and say, hey, look at the uh, chrome dome? He chuckles at that. And he says, it's true. You haven't. I just really like your hair. And I like barbecuing. Uh, so I put them together. Alright. 19 gold. Alright. So, uh, he says, are you gonna need something to haul it with? Uh, do you think you can lift this, Ignacio? <laughs> he just kind of looks at Zachary like, <laughs> cross-eyed almost. Uh, don't worry, I'll lift it. Uh, it's pretty fucking huge. Uh, Mike, question. What's up? Um, 
when we were back in oh gosh what was it wet west what's that place called uh, the lumber place in tormar tamar yes uh -huh. i had a horse and cart did i bring that back oh yeah i because i wasn't <laughs> Okay, I wasn't mm. here when you guys came back, so... Yeah, it's not really a far cry, because you guys came back, and then you went back... Or, you went back to Tomer, and then you went back to Four Stride. Yeah, it makes sense that you'd bring it back. No, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, sure, you can have it. You also have okay, the Okay, there you go, Zach Grail. Now you know that we have in our use a horse and buggy. Mm -hmm. Unless Tadias is using that for all his beer. Ooh. I feel like Tadias can carry a lot of weight, so Hum and Delia are just counting on him being the pack mule. Well, in this scene, what's what is uh what is that grail doing? Oh, uh, we could use the cart, uh, Ignacio. You only have to lift it about half a block; it'll be fine. <laughs> Love it. And it says, um. Oh, all right, so let me, uh, let me get you some twine, and he ties it, uh, he, he gets some butcher's twine, and he wraps it around and gives it, like, almost, uh, or he gives it, like, two handles on the sides and two handles on the top. All right, Dignicio, do you want the face or the ass? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I guess I'll take the face. No, oh, strange. I would have considered you the way you were f fawning over the women and ass men, but okay. And the <laughs> butcher helps, like, helps it down and, like, into your grasp. Come on, Ignacio, lift your weight. You want to be a great way shield, do you not? <sighs> All right. Uh, so I don't know where you stowed the cart, but you can just tell me. Um, I'd imagine at a stable. Sure. All right, uh, we're just gonna bring it to the cart, and I'm gonna go home and start cooking. Got you. Okay. We'll we'll play that out later. Uh, so Hamdelia and Tadias going to uh one of the fine. Beer or uh, alcoholic beverage selling establishments. So, what kind of alcohol you think we should get, guys? Something strong. Does Zachariel have a preference? I don't know. You guys have traveled together long enough to probably know what each other likes. I have, in fact, shared my favorite drink with you. I do not recall this. Something that burns. That it's like fireball or something. It's cinnamon, cinnamon whiskey. <laughs> wow, that was a perfect guess. <laughs> All right, I um, enter the establishment and begin looking for something that looks spicy. All right. Do they have mixers here? I look completely confused at what a mixer is. I go to the, um, to the individual, the shopkeep, and ask, do you have anything infused with cinnamon? So, uh, the name of the shop is, um, uh, Stride Sideways Liquor. Liquors, and uh, the owner is um, a very, uh, very brightly smiling. Uh, the proprietor is a very brightly smiling half elf, and uh, she says, "Oh, infused with cinnamon. Uh, I have something. Uh, it's called. Um, it's called. Uh, it's called burning throat. Although it's uh, that sounds quite, perfect. It's quite a misnomer, though. It's it's got a sweet aftertaste." But it burns on the way down. It's strange. 
I quite like it. I have a couple bottles. We'll How probably much? need that and something that actually burns down the throat. She I says, figure we can just light it on fire. Oh, it's a... <laughs> She giggles at that, and then she says, "Oh, it's a gold bottle for the uh, for the cinnamon for the cinnamon. Uh, what what is Fireball? Is it it's vodka, right? It's whiskey. It's whiskey. Okay, I don't I don't remember. Uh, she says it's uh, it's a gold for uh, a bottle of the cinnamon whiskey. How many do you have? <laughs> Let me check. I was just about to ask. <laughs> I've got five bottles in stock right now. We will take five bottles. Yes, we will." And she starts uh, bringing them up onto the counter. Say, are you planning a party? And throw five gold on top of the thing. Mm, yeah, um, we are. Yeah, so let me uh, let me help you out. One second. She uh, ducks under the table and pulls out uh, an empty box, and it's got like um, hay in there for uh, cushion. Here we go. And she puts the bottles into it. How much empty space is in the crate after we put the five bottles? Uh, enough for like ten more. Of similar. So, size. what other ten do we want? Well, I think I'd like we should get a some nice. Vodka. <laughs> and I think we should get a should. nice wine for for Floriana. Oh, yes, Floriana would probably. Uh, wine. We have plenty of that. He said he it. was making a boar, so we probably want a white one. Ooh, I know what to pair with pig and pork. Let me see. Hmm. And she comes back with uh, a uh, very classy looking bottle, uh, Chardonnay. And uh, she says, uh, this is an elven wine. And how much is that one? Two gold. It's really hard to get. But it's delicious. Do you only have the one? I have two, but I really prefer... It's... The the second one is my personal. She kind of... Okay. She we'll looks just take like, the one. She, she looks like... She, okay. She looked worried for a second because there was a good chance you could have persuaded her, but she sighs in relief. And she uh, puts the one into the box. So this is a strange question. Mm -hmm. And you probably don't have anything like this. But do you have anything non-alcoholic for the kids? Maybe a sparkling cider or uh, apple juice, sparkling apple juice or anything like that? Or grape juice? Uh, she says, I'm not a grocer uh there's one a few stores down but uh let me see if i can find anything uh i mean i don't have anything particularly without the spirit in it if you know what i mean i have uh i have a very weak mead is it sweet very sweet made with very sweet honey Can you give me two of those? Sure. Uh, it's three silver a piece. She collects them and puts two into the thing. So let's see. We're up to eight bottles of liquor. How much money water can we get in there? Uh, I said there was room for a 15 bottles. Oh god. This is the game. We're playing beer shopping. Is there <laughs> any specialty drinks that might, you know, have magical properties or something that might cause an additional effect beyond normal and toxic? Hmm. I have one, a thing or two. <laughs> she uh, opens a cabinet behind her and uh, she puts down this uh, bottle that looks like the bottle is made of stained glass and you see Ooh. bits of light kind of glowing from inside of it Delia gets all sparkly eyed and says we'll take it 
<laughs> you don't even know what it is. She winks. I don't care. Uh, all right. <laughs> Sparkles. Uh, it's five silver. Easy peasy. Would you mind telling us what it is? It might be more fun if we don't know. I want to see Delia drink it and what happens. Well, uh, if you want to, it to be a mystery, uh, if... Just whisper it to him and not to either of us. Alright. She, uh... Let's see. She whispers to hum, and I'll type that out to ladies. Oh. We're in for the good night. So yeah, Thaddeus rubs his hands, pays the lady whatever he needs to, and then uh, there's we'll still room for it. like six more in there or something. We'll say we fill the rest with vodka because that was the last thing Delia mentioned, and Jesus. we'll be good, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. So how much do I owe you? Uh, uh, in addition to what I asked for already, uh, she asks for another uh, another five gold. Five gold. I'm going to throw it in at uh, 15 and call it a day. I throw 15 gold in. Oh, thank you. Enjoy your party. No, thank you. We need to go to the grocery store. All right. I throw the crate on my shoulder and begin following them. All right. So you guys we should are... get some fruit to mix with the vodka. I was thinking that maybe we can soak fruit in vodka. That would be mm. really good. We're going to play The Sims for three episodes. Yeah, let's let's <laughs> so let's let's try to truncate this a little bit. So, um, like, what kind of fruit you guys get? The whole we get some dried peaches and dried apricots and some berries. All right. Uh, Unless there's uh, anything else, is there melon? Because if there's watermelon, we should definitely infuse a watermelon in the vodka. Uh, it's getting close to summer, so there's like. There's there's a type of melon. It's not exactly watermelon, but it's a melon. And you we'll, also we'll get that. One of the grocer also like uh, is this very kind uh, old um, this kind uh, halfling who is like very old. He he chuckles and he's like, I have some apples that are very absorbent. Ooh, that sounds good. What do you think, Delia? It sounds perfect. So he gives you some of those, and all over this trip costs uh, costs about another five gold. Yes, because we're getting juice. Which takes labor. I got it, guys. Okay. Um, Nix, did you say Bit was doing anything? I don't remember. Is she just... Uh... I think she was just hanging with Chaticus now. Okay, so what is, what is Chaticus doing? Um, he's probably asking Gordon exactly where the house is, because no one told him directions. <laughs> True! Yeah. Uh, he, so he, yeah, he, 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 he chuckles, he kind of strokes the back of his neck, he says, oh, it's, uh, it's right outside of, uh, Four Stride on the, uh, west end, and, uh... Yes, he's a very boisterous man, but not very good on the particulars, I can see. Probably makes a very good veteran, though, right? One of the best we got. Uh, just follow the road outside of Forstride on the west, north of the river. And um, if you see a young Janassi child uh, playing in a yard next to a... A similar fiery essence, I would assume. Well, actually, no. She is a uh, water Janassi. She has Ooh. pale white hair and uh, bluish skin. So... Perhaps the mother was a water genasi? How does that exactly work? I'm sure we'll find it, Chadikus. He, he shrugs. Oh, either way. Either way, uh, Gordon, if we were going to be guests of this man, we probably should bring some sort of gift. What do you think he would like? 
He uh, strokes his beard and he says, "Well, he seemed to mention spiky shields a lot and a shovel." <laughs> I'm not clear on the particulars of if he needs such things. I, uh, perhaps some like rusty nails or some sort of thing he could, you know, manufacture stuff with. Gordon's having trouble not <laughs> laughing as you say all this, <laughs> and um, he says, uh, "Hmm." Uh, he says, "Well, he could always. Uh, I know he likes a certain type of drink, cinnamon whiskey, but uh, cinnamon." I can't think of any sort of gift you could give him in such short notice. Mm. Do you have any ideas, Bit? Well, I don't know the guy. Mm. Mm. He's a very large man, and he was very particular on his cape. Mm. What does he like I... to do? What would Gordon know? Listen. Uh, he would pretty well know everything about him. Uh, I would say cooking, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cooking that's right. would be the big thing. Cooking would be the thing I was thinking he, of, but I'm trying to shrug. Oh, yeah, of course. He shrugs and he says, uh, well, he's got all the supplies. Uh, maybe some sort of rare ingredient? He likes <gasps> oh, to cook. Bit! I kind of grab her by the shoulder. I know a, a vendor that sells particular spices and fruits from exotic places. Perhaps Ooh, we can get something from there. Getting- or let's go. <laughs> Thank you, Gordon. As I kind of wave off and I begin trying to track down Spice Daddy as fast as I can. All right. Is Spice Daddy in town? We will find out, won't we? Uh, I'm going to roll a percentile for fun and to determine. Yeah. And uh, the, the DC is... Uh, no, the, oh, yeah, DC. Whatever. The uh, percent is... Uh, uh, is a percent chance. So, 20 or better. Okay. Alright, so it takes some time, um, but you manage to track him down um, in the uh, Garden District, this area, with all these planters next to the river. And uh, he is actually in a shop, chatting with a shop owner, making a transaction. And, you, like, you see his cart, like, uh, outside. Um, with the door open, and he's just kind of like, you know, peeking at it once or twice. But it looks I'll like just he's create shopping. an orderly queue and begin talking to Bit about some of the things that I bought here before. Okay, and uh, a few minutes later, he comes out and he says, uh, uh, "Yeah, he says, uh, oh, are you here for me? Are you here for uh, my f- my uh, fellow grocer?" Well, I'm definitely here for you. I. Uh, oh. <laughs> I have a friend, well, a new acquaintance, if you will, and I know that he is a purveyor of fine cuisine. So I'm looking for some sort of exotic spice or interesting ingredient that might be more different than his normal, you know, usage. Says, well, so do you have anything? Says, well, yeah. Do you have anything very... Can't go yeah. wrong with my special rub, but uh, do you know if uh, he's one of my customers already? I... Don't know. He's a very large man with a flaming head. Oh, him. Of course. Oh, him. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. What has he never bought? I wonder. And he uh, pulls open a drawer that's in his cart, and he starts shuffling around. And he pulls out a little tincture uh, that's maybe about an inch tall, and it's got uh, like a one of the spouts that you'd have for like <clears throat> for like salt and pepper shaker. It's a small mm-hmm. shaker. Pulls it out. And uh, he puts it down and um, and like scrawled on there on, on a piece of parchment that's like waxed on is um, uh, it says it says Secret Daddy. Oh. Fitz, I think this is exactly what we're... He says, I came up with Secret that... Secret Daddy. I, I came up... <laughs> I came up with, came up with that blend a few, uh, a few days ago. It's untested. So definitely, oh, untested. Well, it's untested outside of my kitchen, which is a rare occurrence. My kitchen usually is what on the road. What does it taste like? Couldn't tell you. Have to find I, out. On uh, I ask him how much, 
And as he's doing that, I kind of do the uh, lick my pinky and kind of poke it in there and touch it to the tip of my tongue kind of thing. He says, oh, I wouldn't advise that. It tastes entirely different when used on cooked food. Or used on food and then cooked. Ah. <laughs> I <laughs> kind of wipe my pinky without getting it on my tongue then and uh, just tighten the little, you know, oh, I take the little thing. He, so uh, um, how much would this run me back? Oh, just the gold. Simply done. Thank you very much. And I hand him the gold piece. He uh, he um, wraps in a parchment, ties up the parchment, a nice little bow, hands it to you. Well, I think we've done very well, bitch. Should we head outside of the city? Yes, we shall. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so Thank you, nice daddy. He says uh, he 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 bows and he says. Um, he says, what would he say? He says, um, much, uh, much obliged. I haven't seen a tabaxi this far north in quite a while. In quite a while? You mean you've seen one before? You've seen him before. How long ago? Uh, maybe a few months. Is he talking about seeing Bit or somebody else? Uh, he... You don't see, like, recognition of you in his eyes, but he knows that, like... You've seen him before. He's traveled south. That's where he gets most of his wares. Mm. So, uh... I don't... I don't know how to approach this. So, I know what you're getting at. I think. So he just says he's, it's been a few months. Where did you see? He says, mm, somewhere west of here. Uh, during my rounds around the Silch Road. Are you looking for another tabaxi? Yes. Mm, you're the first I've ever seen in Fourth Strut. But perhaps I can help you. Oh, you can. I have certain abilities that might be aiding to such a search, but we should probably celebrate and talk about that perhaps tomorrow. But thank you again for your secret daddy, Spice. I think it's going to do wonderful. He says... What was the road road called? Uh, hold on. Let me... The west one is... Oh, God. What's the name? It's okay. Hold on. I got the map. No. All right. So the, the one that goes around the forest is called the Silch Road, because it's like cycle. Yeah. And then there's like the River Road, and then there's the Roll Forth Road, which is just between Forest Stride and Rollid. And then uh, the Coast Road going south, and Galtana Road going north. So I guess just the road to Tomir? To mirror, to mirror, which is, is kind of what, what you're saying? Well, uh, he was referring to like the entirety of... Oh, so it's somewhere over there, gotcha. For him, it's been it's for been a few months. So, yep. Mm. I'm gonna ask him like, what town was he close to? Uh, he thinks for a moment and he says, um, "You know, I think it was near Riverend, clear on the other side of uh, Conadir." Could you tell if it was male or female? He blinks, and, uh, he says, um, you know, I, I might remember, uh, let me think on it for a little bit. I'll be in the Garden District for tomorrow, if you want to, uh, ask me again. Oh, please. Yes. You seem troubled. Any information, I would certainly, certainly appreciate. He nods. He says, well, thank you for your patronage. Hmm. And thank you for the spice. All right. Um, let's see. I think we should focus on snow a bit. 
No. So, Senna, tell me what Snow's up to. Well, after leaving, Snow immediately goes back to the temple. And, uh, goes into, her, like, her little chambers area and finds the, like, church coffers. Mm -hmm. And takes out enough money to go shopping with. Okay. Uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. got your thingy. Wait. Ah. Yeah, monk. Uh... Just a second. Uh, yeah, so, um, during your time shopping, the only thing you have trouble tracking down is, maybe I'll just PM it to you. Okay. Uh, Not even at, like, a, like but, a cattle store but, or something No, like yeah, that? you, eventually you do track it down. Uh, because first you try, like, the obvious location, uh, but then they point you to, uh, uh the leather tanner. <laughs> who, um, has, uh, one that he's working on, and he says, I can actually have this ready for you tomorrow. If you would, that would be wonderful. He nods, and, uh... What's the, uh, what's the value of that? Hang on. It's in, it's nifty, difty, uh, two gold. I will hand over two gold to him before it's even done. He nods and he says it'll be ready tomorrow as he's stretching leather. Uh, let me get your name down. Gets a piece of parchment with a small ledger. Uh, it's Snow. Snow. Alright. And then, uh... I will... Head back to... After getting all the, the stuff on my list... Uh, head back to the temple. Okay. Are you about to yeah. have a little scene in the temple? Snow is just gonna start sharpening ice with her whetstone. Okay. Anything, anything spectacular you want to do? Because I have music. That's the only reason I ask. No, not really. Okay. Um, Sorry to kill your music. No, you're good. I just, I, I had thought about it and I was just like, oh, maybe I should, and then I did. It's not a big deal. Alright, so, um, we've been playing Shopping Simulator for an hour, uh, <laughs> which is fun. Uh, so, let's see, does anybody have anything else they want to do before I transition to everyone eventually getting to Zachariel's house? Before you jump to that, yeah. uh, I feel like, you know, everyone in the party would remember this, but isn't there a certain someone that we should go see? Someone should go see. Carol. Didn't we find her friend? You did. And he made it back to Four Stride, and I... Before the whole miasma thing, he bid you adieu. Yeah, but has anyone seen her since? No one checked on her, no. I mean, could check on her, but Ren was alright. Maybe he checked on her by himself, you know? Because we did this all like the day we got back, right? It hasn't been like... Okay. Yeah, it, it's been only like a day and a half since you got back from the whole uh, fire cult adventure. 
and burying Altosi. Long time in real life, though. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right. Uh, oh, and, and one thing. As, um... Tadias, as, uh... You, uh... Hum and Delia are starting to make your way down, or, uh, uh north and across the bridge, um... Walking, uh... In your general direction is a face you recognize, or is a person you recognize, uh, white dragonborn, uh, sort of live in form, and uh, one of your classmates, Delia, it's Kalazan. And you see he's just like, he looks like he's on cloud nine. Like, you know how, this is really hard for me to explain, but think of like the walk cycle from Castlevania, where he like pumps his arms. He's doing that, but he's got a huge smile on his face. Hmm. And you feel like if he could whistle, he would. But he is a dragonborn, so he can't. So he hums awkwardly. Delia and he's just seeing us walking by. Oh, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to say that again. Delia just waves at him. And, uh, he looks at Delia. He says, uh, he says, oops. He says, ah, Delia, how are you? I'm good, how are you? He says, I couldn't be happier. He says, they're making incredible progress at Solid Strides with their Earth Elementals. Hmm, yeah. really? He says, yes, uh, fortunately, Earth Elementals don't, well, hmm. what I'm trying to say is, they don't need to know that much primordial to speak with Earth Elementals and communicate effectively, so the progress with uh, talking to them and uh, being, uh, this is Mike trying to think of the right word, uh, <laughs> coexisting with them and giving them tasks is going very well. In fact, I think I'm ready to move on to the next guild. Well, that's exciting. I'm happy you're in better spirits, friend. He says, thank you. And, uh, He, he nods at three of you, and he keeps moseying his way along. It's very temperamental dragonborn. You know, the first time I met him, he was cutting off Hum's performances. He's just a kid. It happens. Fair enough. I kind of shift the crate on my shoulder. But this is getting heavy, so we should uh, probably get there, shouldn't we? I like to imagine that uh, the fire the fire guys got back to uh, Zachariel's house first. So, what does that look like? I warned him on the way back up the driveway not to hit on my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and since warning him is warning myself. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you you see um, Sihara and uh, Cedric playing outside with um, Suri watching them. Mother. Hello. And uh Sihara turns around and sees the massive hog and she says, What's that, Daddy? It's And she's she's just like totally aghast at this massive piece of dead animal. No, um, it's gonna be a party tonight. <gasps> Her and Cedric both gasp. A party! And she goes into the house. Mom, mom, mom! And, uh, Siri, uh, Siri kind of, uh, chuckles a bit and she says, What's the occasion? I've been promoted. Well, congratulations! Uh, thank you. Uh, Siri, I have a question for you. Yes? I had thought to start training Sihara in the way of the sword. Uh, would you mind? 
Wait. Or would you prefer your son not to be involved in such things? Oh. Um. She says. She th- she looks thoughtful for a moment and she says, "If you can teach him how to, you know, defend himself, I don't see any problem with it." We'll be using blo- or wooden swords. Of course. I will say though, my my boy is very very interested in the arcane. But don't let that uh, stop you. He just might not be as enthusiastic as your daughter. And at this point, uh, Floriana comes out, and she says, "A party? What's going? On? What is that?" It was a boar. I see that. Oh, and uh, this is Ignacio. Uh, how do you do? Has there ever been a greater beauty? She screws up her face immediately. Sakura punches him in the shoulder. <laughs> Forgive him. He's a new we shield, I believe. Uh, sort of a, a ragtag group that Gordon's putting together to sort out some other small issues around the the country. She nods and see what what's what's with the... we can't possibly eat all that. Well, there's a party tonight. Hope you don't mind. Um, I've been promoted. Oh! Congratulations! And she goes in for a hug. I hug her. I kind of, like, shift my back a little bit so the cloak flows around. Awesome. And then she takes note of your badge and she says, Wow, it's been a long time coming, huh? Yes. A little... Well, I'm not sure how I feel. She nods. She says, uh, the little friend you brought has been, um, quite helpful, actually. Oh? He's been, uh, well, frankly, he's been helping me not have to bend over to get things from the lower cupboards. It's quite nice. It's good. Oh, there's, um, just so you're aware, I realize this is the last moment, but there's like, you know, uh, 15, 16 people coming. She blinks and she says, well, it's going to be a warm night, so why don't we have it out here? Well, that was my plan. I was thinking about um, uh, spit roast. She nods and she says, I think we can manage that. That's why I bought the flame boy here. Apparently, the the way you shoot lightning, he shoots fire, so it should be good. And she, like, looks him over again, like, with her eyes kind of narrowed. And uh, then her eyes kind of uh, widen, and she gets a smile on her face as she sees Tadias, Delia, and Hum making their way down the road. Wait. Yeah, Tadias, Delia, and Hum. With a crate of liquor. A crate of liquor. And huge smiles on our faces. And uh, she waves, and she says, um, "Oh, more of your, more of your uh, companions are here." No, no, they're more than companions. They're friends. They're practically family. He nods, smiling. Of course, they are. They're right. Like a sire of boars, and I'm the faithful father. She. Uh... I say that loudly. <laughs> yeah, at this point, you guys you are close enough. Yeah, Tadai's just shaking his head as he's approaching. I'm just still daddy! <laughs> okay. See, Hara pipes up and she says, she says, um, oh, first of all, I have a question for you, uh, Justin. What is Sihara's favorite dessert? Uh, friendship. Oh my god. <laughs> I assume I assume ice cream. Okay. Um 
She... Or like cake, because everyone loves cake. Pie. It's pie. It's gotta be pie. <laughs> it's a special <laughs> pumpkin pie. It's a special blueberry pie. Because it's kind of spicy. She says, well, um, it's, it's an ice cream cake pie blend. Uh, well, it's funny that you say spicy blueberry, because I have a blueberry hot sauce. Sounds awesome. Uh, she says, uh, Dad, can we make the, 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 the creamy berry pie? Yes. Yay! She looks super excited. Oh, I have something for you. She tilts her head. How would you like to learn to wield a sword? She uh, eyes wide, her mouth agape, and she just nods super emphatically. Yes, 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 and she hugs your leg. (laughs) I hug her, and I hand her the two wooden swords. And she just gets this, like, she gets this determined look on her face and she says I'm gonna be the best sorts woman ever um, I have no doubt now be careful they're not toys she uh she takes it uh reverently and she nods hm. at this point um I, I lean into her and I whisper into her go easy on Cedric she nods then looks at Cedric then looks at you uh, at this point, um, uh, uh, Chatticus and Bit are starting to head down the road, and Chatticus and Bit see like a crowd that is the people you're you're with only an hour or two ago. It's not like one you, o'clock in the afternoon. You know, today I haven't seen a boy this big in a long time. Yes, he might be a little bigger after you get into these, and I put the crate down. I think that will be enough. How many are we serving again? My oh, rough estimation bro- is 16. Oh, this one's special. Well, the kids won't try. So. one and I hand it to Delia. And I will <laughs> caress it lovingly and show it off. And be like, tonight's going to um, be fun. Ahm was very considerate. I believe she acquired juices or something for the children. Of course Ooh. I did. They both go. A little weak, though. I was drinking at that age. I don't see what the problem is. I did also bring a very (laughs) weak honey mead, just in case Mom and Dad said it was okay. The kids don't seem to pay any mind to that, but um, at this point, uh, Chattacus and Bitter like, up there, and when do, do... So, just to try to facilitate this faster. Maeve and Illyria, do they end up making their way there, or...? I imagine, yes. Okay. We stop for wildflowers. Okay. Something beautiful to put on Floriana's table. Uh, okay. Um, so eventually everyone starts to gather together. Um, so, what's, what's the preparation thing look like? Just, uh, real quick. Uh, uh, so I'm going to call out to Pebble. And uh, Pebble kind of like lumbers uh, lumbers forward. Kind of slowly. Seems like you're still getting See, to your body. I told you. And uh, it's a very rough greeting that he just uttered, Zachriel. <laughs> Pebble, I need a favor. You think you could break some of this ground and Kind of rough it up a little bit for a fire. Uh, I say in. You get like a small ping from Suni, who says, you know, you can do that too. Yeah, I know, but we need to teach him. And you you like kind of feel like uh, acknowledgement. And uh, Pebble kind of like looks down at the ground and he like (laughs) onto the ground. And then you see him, like, his body starts to roll against the ground, staying stationary as he, like, disturbs the earth. And eventually, there's a little small crater that starts forming. And it's it seems like it's very slow going. Alright, I gotta pat Pebble on the head and help him. Okay. So, yeah, uh, Floriana gets the, the, the prongs required for a spit roast. 
and um, the whole place is a bustle now. And uh, you know, preparations are made, and I'm assuming that other characters help in their various ways. If you want to call out, call attention to any of it, you know, I guess. Delia wants to help make the boozy fruit. All right. Oh yeah, Hum is definitely making boozy fruit. You're using um, Zachriel's counter as a lab bench for these concoctions you're making. The boozy fruit. Chad, I guess, after um, reintroducing himself in Bit, talks about how Bit was very, very smart about finding this spice vendor and thought you'd be interested, as Gordon mentioned, that one of your favorites. And we present the spice pack to him. And my face lights up. See, you are correct. This was a well-planned idea. Good job, Bit. You like? I... What, what is it? He called it Secret Daddy. It is a new blend, only two or three days in creation. Ooh. I'm salivating. <laughs> All the best for our new veteran. I must say, um, well, thank you very much. Uh, you didn't need to, of course. Uh, You're quite welcome. You didn't know us at all, and you invited us into your home. This is a festive event. We wanted to be you have gracious. A lovely home, by the way. Thank you. It's um, going through a bit of change. We're expanding. How long have you been expanding now? Since the beginning of the campaign, so like a couple of months. Well, we have two families living here now, and uh, of course I want to have space for my friends when they come, and also I have all these other friends. Uh, oh, if you'll notice, we have a, a small pond here now, Squirt. Uh, I decided to help him have room to flow around, and there's a passage that leads into the house. Hmm. Well, as long as you believe that is a safe course of action. I know some elementals can grow to be very large, so you might have to continually dig that trench more and more. Well, as he grows, I'll expand it, or until I find a way to reunite him with his family if he so wishes. Hmm. How did you acquire one? For the sake of time, fill in. <laughs> Sudi, cast fill in! Uh, the whole thing about the cultists that released it and then you guys uh, talked it down. Basically, Zachariel talked it down. And that's when I started my life as a Pokemon trainer. Uh, and uh, in this scene, uh, the squirt is like hanging out, kind of like curiously looking at everyone. Um, so uh, the day starts to wane on, and um, I'm assuming you're slow roasting this guy. Yeah. The slowest of roasts for the most tender of meats. Uh, so, the day goes on, and, uh, work is done, and, um, eventually, uh, Zachriel and, um, Pebble make, like, these cool benches out of earth. That's what I'm imagining. Yeah, all around the fire. All around the fire, yeah. A sweet, uh, like, almost, um, what do you call it? I don't know what to call it, but it's like uh, sort of in the ground a little bit. Um, so uh, the the sun starts to get a little lower into the sky, and um, I'm gonna change here. So uh, Maeve eventually makes her way there, right? Oh yes, and she brings the flowers to Floriana and introduces herself, and then she sees Cedric and. Um, Sihara playing with swords. So, yeah, so, here, let me first. 
Um, best of music and stuff. Oh, yeah. Alright, so, uh, you see, um, So you see, uh, you do see the two children, like, they look like they're dutifully practicing. And you introduce yourself to Floriana, and she, she takes the flowers off. Thank you! My pleasure. Um, I don't think I got your name. My name is Maeve. Maeve, lovely to meet you. It's so wonderful to meet you, too. Uh, and, uh, she looks to, um, Illyria, and she says, uh, Illyria, I'm guessing you two uh, are getting to know each other as well. Oh, yes, indeed. Um, so, uh, the two kids kind of look in your direction. Uh, Sihara sees, um, where does Maeve keep her sword? With all this stays on my back. Okay. So... Uh, so as you approach, um, not as you approach, actually, you hear the sound of a wooden sword falling onto the ground, and you turn and you see this young water genasi girl staring at your sword with her mouth open, and she looks absolutely enchanted. Well, hi there, sweetie pie. You like swords, do you? Uh-huh. Can I see I yours? I too. Now you can look, but you can't touch just yet. She nods. So she pulls out Rathalvis and she she shows it to her and she allows her to touch it. Look at it. She's just like utterly uh, just completely uh, bemused and like just looking at the craftsmanship of it and all that. She whispers under her breath, wow. And then she smiles up at you. At Maeve. Can I tell you a secret? Uh huh. You know us girls, we're the best swords people in the world. She, you just have to practice hard. She grins wide. She nods emphatically. Yeah! You hold that sword right, and you do, and you practice hard, and you can be the best best sorts person in the whole wide world. You just don't give up. She blushes and she picks up the wooden sword that she dropped and she says, I gotta practice more. And she runs back. Come on, Cedric! And uh, Cedric's not really keeping up but she is. Ve- she looks very focused. Uh, Today's gonna kind of walk up behind Maeve and just kind of like talk to her. You know you've just caused that boy over there like 15 more bruises, right? They're not sparring, uh, actually. You see them, like, practicing strikes. Mm. They're swinging at air, at least for now. Absolutely. I'm sure there's a boy somewhere that's that's been tortured by me. <laughs> we never had the chance to really meet, Mr. Dias. You are? I'm Maeve. It's nice to meet you. You were with the, um, the fat human man and the, uh, the cat, right? The golden... Oh. With Chatticus and uh, Bat, yes, they are a wonderful group of people. <laughs> I can only imagine. They brought some sort of spice pouch to Zachary. I can only imagine it's going to be burning all of our mouths later. Who doesn't love a spicy rub? Another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy I'm yourself a, if you are. I'm hmm? a fighter by nature. I love fire. <laughs> Well, if you love fire, I am going to uh, walk over to the crate and grab one of these cinnamon whiskey bottles. Here's some fun. Kind of hand it off to her. Everyone, everyone's here, like, here, so if you want to interject into a scene, be my guest. Only if you drink with me. You know, I'm probably the least problematic person here to do that. And I gladly take drinks with, you know, me while hanging out here and move this cat back out of my room. Hi, buddy. Delia is going to crack into that shiny magic liquor bottle. Oh, here we go. 
<laughs> and uh, you take a swig of it, and um, the the alcohol is present. Absolutely, you feel it going down, but you also feel you also feel like your magic has changed a bit too. Okay. Should I try and cast a spell? Oh. I'm gonna try in minor illusion. Please. Some like fireworks around the fire. Okay. Uh, some fireworks around the fire. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so when you do that, and you cast your little, uh, your, your, your fireworks, uh, you start to notice that your feet aren't touching the ground anymore. And oh my God. You, you start floating up an inch, another inch, and eventually you are, this is actually pretty high for a halfling, you're about, or sorry, no, you're actually 10 feet off of the ground. And everyone sees this and it's just kind of like, uh, Floria says, are you all right? Chad just thinks it's part of the festivities and begins clapping. <laughs> I'm gonna, like, hold out the bottle and be like, this stuff is amazing! <laughs> Hum is just laughing, like, rolling laughing. What happens Bit if I take another swig of it? I think Bit wants to grab the bottle and try some. Uh, Absolutely, go for it. Uh, Bit, you have to kind of, like, reach up a bit and Actually, you're pretty tall, so yeah, you just kind of, like, grab it. And, uh, you take a swig, and you feel the alcohol, but you also feel, like, you feel like you're... S something you're not familiar with at all. It's something uh, kind of adjacent to your Sun Soul powers, but it's different. Um... That's a strange liquor. And, uh, Cedric actually starts to make his way over. He looks up at Delia, and he says, Was that... Levitate? I... <laughs> that is not what I uh, tried to cast. Oh. He just, like, is looking up in wonder. What happens if I try to cast it again? You'll have to do it to find out. Yeah, let's do it. What do you do? What are you casting? Uh... I think I'll try to Minor Illusion again. Okay. Uh, this time when you do it, um, your hair turns into really long flower stems, and your hair becomes a bouquet. Oh my god. And you have no idea how long this takes, but you also slowly float to the ground. And uh, Floriana is just looking at you in complete awe. I think we'll switch to boozy fruit now. Are you sure you're uh, you're in bloom? Well, I can do that too. <laughs> uh, Maeve turns into. A spring Illidran elf. I think you can I look at the cinnamon. What? Go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, rules say you can only do that on a long rest, but this is very RP, so go ahead, right ahead. <laughs> so you change, you change like your disposition and your your color in front of everyone and uh, anyone who's not familiar with this. So Floriana, Sahara, just kind of like. Tedias takes a good look at the bottle of whiskey he was sharing with her and starts looking at his hair and making sure he's not flowering. You're not flowering. Oh, good. Uh, 
Today, so I'm gonna need a swig of that. <laughs> I throw in the bottle. I grab the second one next to it, and then say I just it, pop off him. I, I want to say like this is this is all happening like as you're serving the pig and stuff. Like it's it's getting yeah. into evening now. Just because it's more oh, fun yeah. that way. But the sun is not set. Then it is a nice uh, late afternoon. Um, <sighs> oh, go on. Make it. Uh, so a little later, um, you see, like, a as everyone's sort of like uh, chatting in, in their own little circles or, or in a big circle, uh, you hear um, coming from uh, where Sihara and uh, Cedric are practicing is this loud, <sighs> and then, <sighs> like, something is being knocked down. You look over. And uh, you see Pebble rolling back to Sihara, and she bends, uh, or she crouches down, and she gives Pebble a push, and he rolls down this sort of flat track and runs into um, a bunch of uh, rocks that are standing on end and knocks them over. And she says, Yay! Hmm. This is strange. I feel like they invented some sort of sport. What do you call that? Elemental rolling? Um... No, that seems... Daddy, do you want to play our game? We call it... we call it rock rolling. Wow, that sounds like so much fun. Of course. And uh, she, Cedric is like stacking up these uh, other boulders, not boulders, these like smaller rocks up, uh, standing on end. And she says, you just need to give him a little push. And then if you aim right, you'll roll right into him. Hmm. I, I gauge pebble for any sort of... <laughs> is he in distress? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, uh, let's see. Well, roll an insight check. If you're not gonna just ask him. <laughs> you can tell he's having a very fun time. He's making a, whoa. Hello? Rip music. Hi, music. Uh, oh yeah, Rhythm just decided to leave. Alright, well, uh, anyway. Um. All right. Well, I'll give him a little shove. So, uh, you uh, roll a um, roll dexterity. All right. Oh, not save, but well, the same thing. So you don't get all of them, but uh, you get like maybe three out of ten. Bit's watching, and she's gonna ask, "May I have a turn?" Looks sure. Fun. And uh, Pebble comes rolling back, and uh, you hear like a prime. You hear like a rocky like, and it's 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 like a giggle. Okay, <laughs> I roll it. As Give you it a shove. as you bend or crouch, bend down to shove it. Um, Zekro, you kind of notice that uh, this is sort of the first time that Sihara has really focused on Bit, and you see her reaching up, and Bit, you feel a small hand petting your head. My eyes just kind of go over to the side to see who's patting me. It's, uh, it's Sihara, little Janassi girl. Her is really soft. Uh, sorry. And she withdraws her hand. Oh, it's okay. I take it you've never seen one of my kind. She shakes her head. This has been a big day for Sihara. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she, like, politely backs up a bit. 
And then, like, you see her bend down and pick up a plate that had some uh, pork on it, and she starts eating and just watching. I had to finish your dinner. It's getting late. She says the sun's still up. Kind of. If you wouldn't mind, Zagrael, I'd love to take her out show a couple moves with the soul. Mm, very well. Just, uh... Don't go I too far. I promise to be kind. She says, oh, Miss. oh, okay. And she, she picks up her wooden sword. Before Sierra leaves, Fit takes her tail and kind of tickles it. Tickles her with... She turns around, uh, giggling. I'm assuming, like, you're tickling the back of her neck, and she, like, turns, she yeah. spins around, and she is giggling and blushes a little bit. And she says, Cedric, we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn, um, uh, Cat swordsmanship, and he is uh, er, Cedric is just kind of he seems a little disappointed because you're leaving the game of rock roll, but he joins you. Now are you ready? And she shows the kids how to stand with a sword. Uh. She stands uh, in a way similar to how Zachariel takes his battle stance. She just plays with the kids. Okay. She bar- she borrows one sword, the wooden sword from one of them, and then the wooden sword from the other, so they can practice. Sure. Um. So yeah. Uh. Does anybody else want to play out a scene? Before I transition into post sunset, most of the pork has been eaten. Uh, the dessert that Sihara wanted uh, has been served as well. I will say Chadicus wakes up from like a small snooze from whatever plate of pork that he's already finished. Mm-hmm. Kind of looks around and sees that everyone's like, you know, in activities and begins looking at the sun and says, oh, Well, this has been. A very good party, but I'm not of an age to stay up much later. Congratulations again on the veteran status, good sir. And he kind of pats Zachary on the armor very lightly and begins why I clasp you by the earth. Like, Dinner! <laughs> Do a very We're good. brothers now. You don't just pat. <laughs> okay. That, that, is, that is fine. Just warn someone before you do such a thing. Oh. And I begin walking as I kind of have my hand on my back where he kind of crunched it a little bit. <laughs> have a good night. <laughs> Just thank you for coming. Kind of little waved hand. Delia loves boozy fruit, so she is tanked at this point. All right. Um, and is uh, showing her spell book off to you, Ignacia. Interesting. You, uh, you write all your spells down in this multicolored pen quill thing. Why That's are true. each character a different color? Because I like them that way. It's nice. just so much prettier to have multiple colors. Oh, you certainly didn't learn that at Arca. She'll, like, wiggle her quill at him. Do you still go, Darka? Yes, I should be studying for my finals. But I'm partying. And... Don't you find they're always too strict on rules? They never allow you to have fun and explore the depths of your magic? Now you are speaking my language. For example, um... What uh, what spells do you know? I'll uh, like hand over my spell book and let him flip through it. I don't know if you can read these, but I specialize in evocation magic. 
So, like, Fireball. And oh, one of my personal favorites. Mine too. Tell me, do you fancy yourself um, a challenge? A what? A challenge. Sure. Do, what other fire spells do you have? Oh, well, uh, Do you have Scorching Ray? I do. How about a test? Um, as a, a former student of Aka, one who uh, left to pursue his own, against uh, the new graduate. I'm sure you'll graduate. One can help. How about we have a test? Um, what would you like to wager? I don't know. There's always money. Hmm. Do you what? If I win, you have to drink the rest of that alcohol with me. Okay. Wait, what is is he referring to the entire crate or is he talking about the magic? The magic. Ah. And if you win, is there anything your heart desires, young uh, mage? Does he have anything shiny on him? Like jewelry? He has a very shiny ruby necklace. Oh my god. How about you let me wear that necklace for the rest of the night? I will get it back. Of course. Very well. Okay. All right. This is a test. Um, see, I left Arca because they were holding me back. Allow me to demonstrate by beating you in this test. We will go by range of spells. So, shoot your... Um, I, he looks around. Is there like a hill with trees or anything nearby? Uh, let's see. You're, you're adjacent to a farm field with crop. Um, there's a tree. There's like a copse of trees like a few... Uh, maybe like a football field length away. It's 300 feet. Hmm. Is it like a risk of starting a fo like a forest fire? <laughs> um. Well, it's kind of a warm night, but it's sort of isolated. So his judgment would probably be, you know, if embers got onto the field, then there might be a problem. All right. How about uh, uh so, hmm, scorching ray could be similar to fireworks. So, uh, whoever shoots the highest. You're on. Do I get like a stool or something because he's taller? <laughs> That's a question for him. I don't think it's fair that you're taller than me. Hum interjects just blasted and she's wait, 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 wait. <laughs> who's the judge of who's ha is higher? Oh, trust me, you, Dias, you should judge. be the judge. Up in the air. Ah, means you'll have to go at the same time. All right. Ugh. I stand up from my little spot. I put my bottle down, kind of stretch my neck, stand between them, and say, "All right, I will do a countdown, and you'll know the countdown because a light will show up at your feet." Um, and I grab one of the little, like, you know, crates and benches, and I flip it upside down, and I put Delia on top of it. I should look. All right. So, both of you prepare your spells. Are you ready? 
Delia nods. Of course. Three. Then I'm going to have the wings shoot out my back. <laughs> I fly up immediately, bonus action dashing, so I'm 60 feet up in the air. Two! And then I cast light down on the ground with my action. One. All right, I'll fire a scorching ray into the sky. Nope, well, it is not. It, I know. I works. rolled that off of. I don't, you didn't really need to roll an attack either. My scorching ray goes 240 feet. Because of his feet. Because of sorcerer. Oh, good. <laughs> so one of them kind of gets a little bit of a hub on my head and the other one zooms off way into the air. Yeah, that's probably what happens. All right, I raise my hand towards Mr. Flamey Boy. Who's the daughter, the fighter guy? Delia, like, whirls around. She says, you've got to teach me how to do that. Well, unfortunately, uh, these are the things that you learn outside of Vaca. All right, I could try. This booze. So, uh, as um, Tadias is starting to come down, because your wings are going to run out pretty quick here. That's what I meant it does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you all Can hear... we take five? Sure. Yeah, it's 7.50. Sure, let's take five. Okay, I'll be right back. Perfect. Let me just uh, take this stuff down. Okay, so, as I was saying, as um, to dice, you are coming down and uh, I guess we're regaling in what just happened with this spell competition. Um, I don't have the sound effects anymore, which sucks. But, um... Yeah, it's all gone. Um... You, uh... You hear, uh the sound of a bell ringing coming from the citadel uh, and it's uh, very distinct in the night air and I need to actually should change the uh, music here um, but you turn and oh, let me make sure I get this right um, mm, mm -hmm. okay so uh, against the night sky uh, of the east. On the eastern side of town, uh, you see a green flare in the sky. Um, and to refresh all the players here, you know that this is like the lowest level. And uh, the bells are chiming. Um, and it, it goes on for a minute or two. Do you, does anybody do anything? Music stops. Uh, festivities are always ruined. However, doesn't seem to be anything too dangerous. Let the others take care of it. This is the night for fun. Militia can Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. about five minutes pass, and uh, the the signal for all clear rings out from the citadel and um, the smoke that the flare made just fades away into the night sky I wonder what that was all about uh, from that direction probably um, didn't they say they were having issues from the forest and uh you hear Gordon's voice, who has been trudging along and getting here. Goblins! Yeah. As he approaches. Sorry, I couldn't make it for dinner. Is there any food left? Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, Floriana says, come here, grab a plate. And he goes with her. Oh. He starts chowing down. What's wrong? Are your knees acting up? You couldn't get here on time? I just had some business to... Mm, this was delicious to take care of. Mm. 
invoices to uh, track and oh, this is amazing and uh, pay out and all that. Well, it doesn't matter. You're here now. He nods, takes another uh, bite of this delicious roast you've got. May politely excuses herself. Thank you so much for the invite. I have enjoyed this immensely. And uh, congratulations on your promotion. But I must go. Oh, thank you for coming. It's an honor to break bread, per se, with the uh, new recruits. It was an honor to have an invite, and your family is just gorgeous. She wanders off after that. She goes to the inn. Okay. Uh, there's no owl because you're in the middle of a field, but yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Floriana looks at you, Zachariel, and she says, um, well, I should probably be... We need to get the young ones into bed. It's getting late. I agree. We have, um... Uh, excavators, Gordon. Uh, Gordon, finish your food. He's just chewing. Help yourself. Mm -hmm. There's dessert as well. Mm. And alcohol. Mm. And his face brightens up in the light of the fire. Hum leans over to Delia and says, Hey, Delia, you have any more of that liquor left? She, uh, like, drunkenly turns to you and hands you the bottle and a little bit of it sloshes out. Oh yeah, weren't wasn't Delia gonna drink the rest of that with uh Lamiel Hotman? Yep. Hum pours a little bit into a cup and brings it to Gord. Says, This is for you. He swallows, pats his uh pants. Oh, thank you. Uh, he takes it and he takes a swig. Hmm. That's a little... That hits a little different. What was that? Delia, like, shakes the, the bottle at him. And then takes another swig and hands it off to Ignacio. Hey, Gordon, you wouldn't happen to know any magic, would you? I know a few tricks. Like what? I would be so interested to see you do something. He says, uh, well, and he, uh, he, uh, he points to you, and, uh, he says something, but you hear it in your head, but he, he looks shocked, because not only do you hear, uh, you hear, hello, hum, how are you? But you also hear strange um, musical tones along with it, and it looks like he didn't intend for that. Hum just giggles wildly. And he kind of, like, looks at his hand. What? And he looks perplexed. What have you got there? Fun time magic drink. He nods. Uh, prefer some of the uh, regular fun time drink. If there's any left. She goes fun. and grabs him a bottle of the cinnamon whiskey and hands it over. Ah, uh, Zagreel's favorite, of course. He takes a swig. Is Ignacio doing anything? I just want to know if he uh, casts a spell or not. Yeah, well, he would have started working through his spells. Okay. Like, he'd take a sh take a shot and hand the battle or hand the bottle to uh, uh, Delia, and then point up and cast a cantrip or something. Okay, so uh, assuming firebolt, 
when he does that, yeah. the flame is blue, and then this flame, this blue flame starts to spread over his arm, and it's not, like, painful or anything, and then it, it just, it's like this blotch of flame that just travels up his arm, goes up his shoulder, and lands on his head, and he's got a blue hair to match Zachriel's red fire hair. Oh, if only Snow could see me now. We cut to Snow. Uh, piously, religiously sharpening ice. Yep, and her various other weaponry that she picked up. She feels a twinge. Ignores it. Her eyes look twitching. And we go back to the scene. <laughs> Um, you are, I think you're going to leave this now, Justin. The kids are being put to bed. Friends. Excavators. Newcomers. Thank you for coming. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to... Take the ears of the excavators for a moment. Do we get them back later? I hope so, because it's hard to be a bard without ears. Yes. Come, gather around the fire, bring drink. Celia gathers. Does Bit do anything? Uh, um, Bit actually went uh, went back when okay. uh, Chaddock went back. Ah, oh, gotcha. Okay, so it's just Ignacio who's here now. That's not of the excavators or any of the other mentioned parties. Well, when Zachary calls uh, Delia away, that's who he was drinking with. He's just gonna stand up and kind of dust himself off and. <laughs> I wonder what Snow is doing. And go look for Snow. <laughs> God, okay. That might be a scene later, who knows. Uh, okay. Uh, Gordon sits down. He has a slice of that blueberry, or that, that creamy berry pie, and he's just having at it. Mmm. We've, um, we've come a long way in these past, uh, well, what's it been now? A month? Month and a half? And we have a long way to go. Yes. However, I don't know if I'll be joining you. Delia is going to wag her finger and be like, that's not allowed. You are absolutely right, Delia. What the fuck are you talking about? Today is going to kind of get quiet. He's been... <laughs> well, um, over the past couple of weeks, I've um, kind of been doing a lot of thinking. And I don't feel right um, being out there uh, not coming home to this. With a child and a wife to care about. I, um, I, I believe almost being eaten alive by a giant frog creature may have opened my eyes. Do you remember why we started this? Well, to be truthful, I don't really know why you started it. Um, I know you saved my life, which I'm forever grateful for, and even more so the, the life of my wife and child. And those people still exist.
You're right. And they're out there, and they're threatening other people. And at that, uh, Floriana, who's sitting next to Zachriel, uh, squeezes his hand. Yes, um... I know they're threatening other people. They're threatening people even here in Forstride. I feel like, um... My skills could be better suited here. So what is your plans? Well, um, up until this morning, I had planned to retire. Do you think this is the best time to retire? I don't think it's the best time, but... Uh, and forgive me, Illyria, I think of all of you as my friends and trusted allies and more so family over the last little while, but I, um, I can't risk anything happening to the, to my family, my, my daughter, especially. If I had been here in the first place, they never would have been taken. But there is something else. As I said, I... I had full intentions on telling you all tonight that I was retiring and I wouldn't be continuing on. But this morning I had that vision of the flames hitting me and... I feel like... Uh, feel like there's a, there's a role still yet for me to play. So what is it you're saying to us, Zachariel? Because I'm confused. Yeah, are you, are you leaving or not? Well, I would... Not like I'm leaving. I'm always here if you need me. Will you be traveling the road with us? I don't know. I, I had every intention not to. Um, but now I'm torn between wanting to protect Force Droid, all of its people, Floriana, who can protect herself, but she's out now risking her life. If she's out risking her life and doing what she wants to do, she, who's uh, here to protect Ciar? She chuckles a little bit and she says, Oh, it's it's only so that if they come near our home, I can hmm, sort of take advantage of it monetarily, sweetheart. And besides, I did want to say, when you weren't here before and we were taken... It was different then. I didn't have what I have. Oh, I didn't know of what I had then. And uh, she just lifts her hand and just the very small, faintest little uh, spark leaps from her ring finger to her uh, index finger. So what are you saying to us, Zachariel? We're all drunk. Well, and we need I, you to be concrete with. I had honestly not expected you to drink so much, but uh, I guess I should have. Uh, <laughs> I look Pommel at Delia. Laughs very hard Hilaria and has says, been "You drinking. expect." I didn't catch what you said next. Um, I Hilaria wasn't drinking. Oh, there he is, Lucid. And uh, Gordon says, I'm not too deep. Way to the party. I want guidance. You're my closest friends. 
Ilaria gets up and walks over to Zachriel. She hands him a little pouch. <gasps> what is this? You know, Zachriel, I had family. It died. He died. I didn't give up. I didn't leave. And I'm still going to fight for my family here in Forest Stride. You shouldn't give up either. And then I walk out of the room and leave. Uh, it's not. It, so it's like a little. It's a little fire pit in like. And the she outside. looks kind of upset. Okay, I'm confused because she just said leave her family, but. That's my point, Alaria. Fourth Stride is your home. Fourth Stride is your family. I think we're a little, uh, I think something's getting lost in intent here. What's Alaria trying to express? That, um, Zachriel is leaving his family. By staying in Forest Ride. But I but not fighting for them. Anyone else opinions? Uh Gordon had something, but I forgot what I was gonna do. Uh Gordon says, um well, one thing he's he was gonna say was that uh he he smiles and he says, You were gonna retire Right after getting the veteran? Well, truth be told, I didn't really know about the veteran until you told me, but... Um... And then he asks... Oh, that's right. He asks, um... He asks... The, this vision that you talked about, the, the fire thing, what, what what was it, exactly? I'm, I'm curious. And he puts his... He, like... Uh, from where he is, he leans, he just leans closer, very interested. Well, I've been getting visions from Suni, she speaks to me now. Um, up until this morning, the visions have been what I assume were her, fighting another colossal creature. But this one was different. This was, it was being engulfed by flame, but didn't burn. It felt like my flame. He nods. And then I woke up. And this happened in the Temple of Stone. Strokes his, uh, he strokes his short beard, looking thoughtful. He says, Oh, I think I understand what, uh, Lyria was getting at. But, uh, he says, and, and, like, Floriana just interrupts... Floriana just interrupts him, and he says, You can protect us by... How I... Well, how I... Said before... By... Going wherever these... Uh... Awful, terrible people are, and... Stopping them. Yes, but I believe you also said you wanted to come. She... She says... I'm... She says, I might. I might. If you don't, I might. Um, you're awfully quiet for once. I don't know what to say. Tadaius? I've only known you in a short time, Zachariel. But you're a good man. And from what I've seen, from what I've heard, these roads are safer because of you. You don't owe them anything more. If this is what you want, so be it. 
Illyria, um, myself, Delia. We will all miss your company on the roads, out adventure. We know you'll be here. You deserve to know your family is safe. You deserve to share time with them. If this is how you wish to do it. Be it. Thank you. Delia, um, can you form sentence? No. Today I said it better than I ever. I'm a little better with the alcohol. I'm going to rub on that. <laughs> Just remember, Zachariel, when you get bored, and you complained about it and beg us to come back onto the road with us. We might have to talk about, you know, you carrying all the packs for a while. Buying some new equipment, you know, maybe some bribery involved. I give him a smile and I take a big sip of my drink. Um, you're one of the most outspoken, outspoken people I know. You have a vast intellect, a caring heart, delicate hands, frightful presence. I'm going to say, I'm, I'm torn, Zachriel, because I understand the need for you to be with your family. That's the most important thing that could happen. But I also know that we pledged to take care of this problem so it would hurt no one else like it hurt your family. And I feel like you're abandoning that. Floriana grips your hand a little bit tighter for a moment. I respect you so much as a human being. As a, excuse me, as a, a, a Janassi, I think you're one of the strongest men I've ever met in my life. But right now, I feel like you're taking the easy way out. Your wife is a strong woman, and she could take care of your family. But I feel like you need to be out there with us to stop this plague, or it's never going to end. Gloriana, um, anyone looking at her can see her nodding, the most subtle nod, and uh, a tear kind of falls down her face. And she um, leans against Zachariel a little bit more. You have one of the toughest choices to make here. The rest of us don't have all of what you have. We have each other. Some of us have family. But Illyria and I have you. We have this people. That's it. And if you give up on this, I don't know what I'll believe in anymore. I think you misunderstand my intention. I, When I say retire, I don't mean give up fighting. I would remain here and deal with the threats around Forstride and train new soldiers, new way shields. The threat grows beyond the walls of Forthstride. And we know this because none of our large battles have been in Forstride. But they grow strong outside that wall. And if we don't take care of it, who's going to? If we allow it to grow outside the walls, it becomes so powerful that when it comes inside the walls, it's going to crush them.
You speak truth. Gordon uh, is sort of sitting there and looking into the fire, looks to Zach Riel. And Floriana, um, she, she just sits next to him, just leaning on him, holding his hand. He doesn't offer any more, uh, any further influence. She's already made her piece, or made her made her statement. Zachary, been... where have we battled so far? Has it just been in four stride? Who have we battled? We've been all over the area. We've run into multiple cults and multiple areas, and none of them are connected. And if they all grow strong, they're going to crush us. They're going to crush the city that we love. It's going to happen. And if you allow it to build up on the outside, then when it comes in, there's not going to be enough of us to battle it. And we need you. You're our leader. We need you. Um, I believe you're the leader. I follow you. Well... Forgive me for having you place your faith in someone who has doubt. Every good leader has doubt. That's what makes him a good leader. You think about the people. You worry about the people. You wonder if you're making the right choices. That's what makes you a great person, a great man. A narcissistic man cannot lead a group of people because he doesn't think about the people. He makes decisions without thinking about the consequences. You think about the consequences. That's what makes you great. Well, Gordon... Floriana. Zachary, they both say in their own voices. I guess I have to apologize. Gordon sort of tilts his head. I cannot leave home to Darius, Illyria. And Delia and Valora to face whatever it is that is driving this. And you're right. I was contemplating the coward's way out because I was afraid. I never called you a coward. But to not act would be greater folly.
Loriana uh, leans up and kisses Zachariel's cheek. And she whispers, I'll take care of the home front. Squeezes your hand again. I just rub her back. On this night, and for every night to come, Isaac Real Vitalis, once a man destined to protect a noble, vow to you hum, Archigrin, Archigrin, Archigrin. that I will continue to, if, if you will have me, lead you and the people of this nation towards a brighter day, even if it means sacrificing myself. We will crush the cultists. We will Drive them out of every hole they hide in. We will make them suffer for what they have done to us. The ones that have been turned against their will, if they can be saved, we will save them. And whatever these visions give me, I will see them through, and I will help Suni with whatever she needs. You get a ping from her, and uh, it's definitely gratitude. I, I would expect nothing less of you, Zachariel, because you are a great man. Delia cheers and takes another drink. <laughs> And uh, Gordon says, um, something tells me that you'll probably be fine. He takes a swig of the fire, uh, the, the cinnamon whiskey. He says, you are tough as nails, back rail. And I promise you, Zach Rael, by Talus, that I will fight next to you till my dying breath. Thank you, friends, for stealing my resolve. We need to drink. <laughs> yes, and offer this down and we, the night is still young. There's plenty of time for poor decisions. We're going to see the Dias' family? I love his mom. Everyone loves my mom. So, uh, next you said Lyria left? Yes, she's gone home. Okay. You're down one Lyria. Uh, so, what do you guys do now? After that massive scene. Be right back. I'm going to do some drinking with them, and I'm going to, like, quietly kind of, you know, with them. Um, you know? You told me earlier that he do that. Can you say that again? He told me earlier there that he planned to do that, to retire, to stay home. Hum looks at Tadias with, like, these dagger eyes and said... Knew, and you didn't tell me? He asked me to keep it a secret until he would tell you himself. I was worried about him. I'm still worried about him. 
to know we how have, much you care. We have to make sure we come home as much as possible so he can make sure his family is safe. We should do better. We, we should will do better. We will do better. Um, we can end this. I know we can. I've seen it. I've been told it. One day, we will have peace, and Zachariel can live here without fear of a growing and crouching danger. But I will say our chances have improved greatly, thanks to you tonight. I wanted to offer my gratitude. I only speak from my heart. I know. And I love you for it. Aw, oh, you know I love you too. But there's Cuddle, someone who cuddles needs. underneath him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. But someone else needs to hear this. So you take care of the big guy. Make sure Dahlia doesn't go steal something or make something float that shouldn't float. And I'm going to go check on Illyria and let her know. Okay. Sounds good. I'm going to go and get the uh, rainbow shackles. We may need them for deal. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Gods above. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna kind of stand up and on little wobbly leg, just go check on Larry and let her know that Zachary's still around. Okay. Uh, Nix is still away from keyboard. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm back. Okay. Uh, so I'm. It seems like. Uh, it seems like Tadias would probably check there first. Yeah. Um, I know where she lives. I've, I've been there before. So, uh, in time, uh, uh, Illyria, what, what, what's Illyria doing at home with Valora? Like, what's, what's the little scene like? Um, just drinking some tea, you know, sitting on the little porch. Just trying to calm down from what I've been told. <laughs> Uh, okay, hold on. There it is, I think. Hum starts playing a little song and sings about the Battle of the Frog Hemoth. Oh, God. <laughs> Delia takes her shoes off and is dancing around the fire. <laughs> Alright, so back at Illyria's home on the uh, industrial hill. Um, I haven't done anything with the map in a while. But, uh. I gotta turn this down for me. Um. And, uh. Eh, eh. Tadias, uh, you're sort of walking along the, um. Uh. The area here. Uh, shoot. You walk by the, um, you walk by the Citadel, and, you know, you see some guard dudes, uh, doing their patrol thing. Um, it's not right, sorry. And, uh, yeah, you, you eventually make your way to the hill, and you start making your way up, and you make it to Illyria's house. I don't kind of say anything, I just kind of walk up and lean against the wall, kind of. Sitting with her, looking in the same direction. Wait, you all right? Is oh, so okay. She's so, on the porch. Uh, mm, yeah, okay. There's a little. There's a small stoop. Yeah, and, yeah so I, I just didn't. I like... didn't envision these houses to have porches. They have balconies, but not porches. But a stoop. Okay, yeah. yeah, balcony then. Okay, so you oh, see Illyria on the balcony. I'll just kind of walk up the street, look up to her, kind of wave a hand up. Oh, party's over so soon. A lot of news happened there. You know, Valeria, I consider you family. As do I you. And Zachary is part of our family. Yeah, of course he is. I just 
couldn't handle another family member gone, you know? You won't have to. What? Um, there's a way with words and the way with logic. Zachariel will continue to travel with us. Oh, that, um... <laughs> Thank you, um... Um, you sneeze. <laughs> um, are you catching the flu? No, I just felt a disturbance in the force. <laughs> I came here to tell you that, but I also came here to make sure that you are right. You've been through so much recently, I can't even imagine. But seeing oh, you... Thanks for checking up. I'll be just good. Illyria, like I said, if we are family, this is the first time in a while I've seen you get emotional. I... I just want you to know that we are all here for you. If you ever need anything, you don't hold it in. You let me know. You let Hum know. You let any of us know. And we will help I you. will. Thank you for checking up on me and telling me the, got the great news. Valora uh, is, like, just kind of up against Illyria's legs. Is she standing or sitting? Sitting. Okay, oh, then Valora is, like, half on her lap. Because <laughs> she's so big. Um, by the way, uh, Zachriel, did you open up the package that, uh, Illyria put down on your lap? Or she huffed off? Uh, I would have done it after. Okay. After... So... I mean, do you? Like, after... Like, you can finish their scene, and then I'll... Okay, got it. I, um, you know... Kind of rub my foot in the dirt a little bit. <sighs> Look over to where my home is and say, We're a good team. I want this done and I want Zachary to go home safe. And I want you to we come home safe. We all do. We protect each other. I'm sure none of us will die. Ooh. As long <sighs> as we have each other's backs. Ma. Well. Be well. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'm going to go make sure Delia isn't blowing up an orchard somewhere. I look off into the distance. Well, I don't see no fire or smoke, so you're good for now. Keep it that way. I kind of smile and begin heading back to my home. Alright. Uh, we'll, we'll cut back to um, the, the fire is starting to die down a little bit unless you add f uh, fuel to it. And um, Gordon is uh, few in and he's uh, just watching whatever Hum and Delia are doing. And uh, Floriana is hugging uh, you, Zachriel, either from the side or from the back. Just enjoying your presence. I uh, I have the pouch in my lap, and I I just kind of slowly open it. What does he find inside? It's those mangoes with a note that says, "Congrats on your." Veteran rank or whatever. Oh, promotion. Oh, promotion. Yes, that's the word. Sorry, I cut off there, I guess. Uh, internally, or <laughs> very softly. So she bought them. <sighs> well, I was saving them for a good time. <laughs> What are Helia, uh, Helia? What are Delia and Hum doing? 
Celia is getting kind of she's hitting the wall. Uh oh. So sh she uh, picks up a boot oh, and no. like salutes. It is like it's time for me to go home, guys. Come on, I'll take you home, kid. She'll go home with home. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Uh, G Gordon. Yes, he says, floating a little bit. He looks up at you. Perhaps it's... best if uh, you help help home. <laughs> no, that's not a bad idea. He stands up, and uh, he wobbles very subtly. Then he grabs another chunk of pork, scarfs it down. And he's, oh, Gordon. Mm, that was because I drank a bit. Oh, help yourself. Take whatever you like. Um, I just want you to know that when this is all over, I do intend to come help you. He smiles and he says, I'm looking forward to it. Claps her shoulder. I'm sure... Actually, hang on, I need to check something. Sure thing. Check your DM. Uh, I will as soon as I get one. Uh... Shit. Well, hang on. <laughs> uh. Hmm. There's, um, you know, even when we take out whatever this threat is, new threats will always rise. And we'll need people there to defend. Always. Need limp for the roads. Have a good night, old friend. He says... You too. You deserve it. And he goes in for a hug. I give him a hug. Pat's your back. He says, if I don't see you until the next time you head out, just uh, let somebody know for me. And he starts following Delia and Hum. I turn to Floriana. Well, um, I guess this means I'll be leaving after all. She nods. She says... In one quick action, I'm going to swoop her up in my arms and carry her inside. She giggles, and she, like, kind of looks over, like, behind you at the the pig still on the most, and she says, oh, let's deal with that tomorrow. And all the animals will come get it, and then we're giving back to nature. She nods and uh, she just kind of looks up at you, her eyes kind of starting to fade a little bit because it is late. And she has had some alcohol. Yes, she had a beautiful Chardonnay. Yes. She's wine drunk. Not really, but close enough. Box of wine knocks me right out. <laughs> so uh, you take her up and. Um, uh, you guys end up going to bed, and, uh, uh, Gordon... Uh, Cue the R&B music. <laughs> uh, fade to black. Uh, Gordon, uh, just kind of, uh, tags along with Hum and Delia. And, uh, he just makes light, small talk as you guys walk across the city. The, uh, the, I wanted to mention this earlier, but the moon, uh, sparkles along the river as it flows. 
and um, he, I guess, drop off Delia, and then he'll just, you know, he'll just. No, I take Delia home with me. Oh, I'm bringing okay. her oh. to Gizo gotcha. to help sober her up a little bit before she goes to bed, so she won't hurt so bad tomorrow. Gotcha. Well, Gizo is just cleaning up as you get there, as it is quite late in the evening, and um. He says, oh, I, I know how to fix this. And he has, like, these really greasy, flowery biscuits. Eat a couple no. of those. Eat a couple of those. And then here, he puts down a pitcher of water. Drink up, my friend. You're gonna need this. Delia eats the biscuits and drinks some water. Gordon had uh, already um, wished you a good evening, and he Heads back to the way she'll head Oh, before you go, Gizo. Gordon? Um, Gordon? Not Gordon, Gizo. I thought. Wait, Gizo's not going can anywhere. Can you get us Gizo's a. Do you have a tonic for. Uh. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I have I have something for her. Here we go. And I, she, he pours her a bit. Drink this too. You're gonna need it. Delia does. Good night, Gordon. Thank you. Good night. As you leave. All right. Uh, and everyone goes into their homes and uh, passes the night. And we will continue next week. So thank you for watching, Joy. Uh, I hope you didn't cry too much. I almost did. Um... <laughs> And, my god, I need to know what you guys plan on doing the next day so that I can prep stuff. So I know what to prep. But we can talk about we that can... over the week or, you know. I think Ashwick has been a thorn in our side for a little too long. Oh, he's on my list. <laughs> so it begins. Alright, sounds good to me. You can think about it more and then just let me know over the week if there's anything else that comes to mind. And uh, yeah. So, see you guys next time I end the recording.